Section 2, Physical and Data Protection Strategies Using EFS to Encrypt Files and Folders In this section, you will learn about the strategies for providing data level protection to your network resources. This lesson begins with using the encrypting file system to protect data at rest residing on file servers or workstations. You'll learn how the encrypting file system works, then you'll learn how to encrypt files and share encrypted files. The encryption of files ensures that only the owner of the file and any other specified recipient can open, view, or modify the contents of that file. Microsoft's encrypting file system, or EFS, provides a method for encrypting files. EFS is based on two encryption methods, symmetric key encryption and public key encryption. The encryption process begins when a user encrypts the file. EFS generates a random symmetric file encryption key for the file. Then the file is encrypted using the symmetric key. And that key is encrypted with the user's public key. The encrypted symmetric key is then stored along with the public key in the data decryption field of the file header. If the owner of the encrypted file wants to allow another user to be able to decrypt and use their encrypted file, the owner must add that user's public key to the data encryption field. This can be done from the General tab of the file's properties. Choose Advanced and then click Details. Click Add and search for the user in the directory. The user must have an EFS certificate issued to them. The EFS certificate contains the public key that will be added to the file's header. The EFS certificate required for encrypting files can be self-generated by the Windows computer, but in a domain environment, the EFS certificate should be issued from an internal certificate authority server. This will provide better EFS management and certificate recovery capabilities. In this demonstration, you will learn how to encrypt a file using the encrypting file system. First, I'll check to ensure that the user has an EFS certificate by launching the MMC console. And now I'll add the certificate's snap-in. I'll expand the certificates node and expand personal. In the certificates folder, I'll double check to make sure that I have an EFS certificate which I do. Now I'll open File Explorer. I'll encrypt this file called Confidential by right-clicking on the file and choosing Properties. In the General tab, I'll click Advanced. Here's our two choices, Compress or Encrypt. I'll choose Encrypt and click OK. Now I'll click OK to apply the encryption. I'll just encrypt the file only in this case. Now, in order to display encrypted files in green font, I'll go into my View menu in File Explorer, choose Options, Change Folder and Search Options, click on the View tab, and I'll scroll down and check the box to show encrypted or compressed NTFS files in color and I'll click OK. Now as you can see, my file is green in font. If I wish to share this file with another user, he will need to have his certificate, and specifically his public key, embedded into the file header. I would right-click again on the file, choose Properties, click on Advanced, this time, with the file encrypted, the Details button is enabled. I'll click on that, and then what I would need to do is click Add, and then search for the user that I wish to share this file with. 
the user will need to have an EFS certificate issued to them in order to be able to give them access to this encrypted file. In this case, I have none, but I would select them from this list and click OK. And that's all there is to encrypting files and sharing those files. In this lesson, you learned how the encrypting file system can be used to protect files and folders. You learned that EFS relies upon symmetric and public key encryption technologies, and that EFS requires an EFS certificate issued to the user for that purpose. Finally, you learned how to encrypt a file, display encrypted files in colored font in File Explorer, and how to add users to an encrypted file.